started with reading a statistic from abcnews.com. 20 million unmarried women in the last election did not vote. 15 million of them didn't even bother to register. No surprise here. Women don't give a rat's ass about politics unless they're old, gray, fat, fugly. Those are the ones who care, and the rest don't. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wendy, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I think it's kind of funny. I'm listening. I've been listening to you for a little bit here, and I think it's funny how you've gotten all these women all worked up over this issue. I think the statistics are, cor are correct, but what I think is funny is that that's how you like your women. So I think you're bringing this up, well, letting things boil, having fun watching it happen, but in all reality, this is how you like your women. I like them hot and stupid. That's right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, I revel in it. All these women trying to get you to come over to the side that women are intelligent, which I happen to feel that there are a lot of us that are intelligent, but those are of no interest to you. You've made that very clear. Well, because because those ones are either uh, older, uh, they've dropped their last egg, they, uh, they're not that attractive. You know who we're talking about. Well, I've always been uh, an attractive, intelligent woman. And that is not the type of person that you would go after. You but not to after, mention the fact there are very few women like that. Well, you, you go after the girl who is not going to be put off by having your corral of women, who is not going to be put off by you saying a beautiful woman should not be educated. Those are not the type of women that you're going to go after. That's right. And there aren't that many of them anyway. Why waste my life trying to find the few there are? So I think it's really funny that you're trying to get these women all worked up over this voice. I don't have to try very hard. No, you obviously not. <laughs> this is easy. Yeah, it was extremely easy. This is like, uh, this is like really, this is like, uh, it's like shooting rotten fish in a barrel. Yes. What does concern me, though, is that you have a barrel full of young men that are listening to the show. And I think for a lot of what you say, you're giving them some valuable information. But I do want those young men to know that there are women out there who are strong, intelligent, beautiful. Yes. Kind, and they were all your mom's friends, guys. Remember that. Kind-hearted. Some of those are cougars, too. You could go after that. You could hit that. Even the 20-year-olds. No, no, heart. no, yes. no, oh, yes. no, no. Yes. Why do so many of them not vote? That has nothing to do with being. It's the artists. largest. It's the largest group of people who do not vote. That unmarried has to females. Do with being kind-hearted. I'm talking about. I want these young men to know that there are nice women out there who will be strong, pretty for them, intelligent. Most of those are not so kind-hearted. I mean, Forrest That's Gump good. was kind-hearted, and if you could find the female version of Forrest Gump. With the communication skills of Helen Keller, that's a 10 plus. There, there are those out there, and that they will make good partners for them in life. <laughs> I know that's there all are. I, that's, that's all I want to say. There are some of us out there. There just but, aren't that many. I mean, somebody's got to, darling, someone's going to win lotto in California real soon. That jackpot gets pretty big sometimes. Yeah. But chances are it won't be anybody we know. <laughs> no. I don't think it's going to be me. Do you ever Have you ever known anyone who's been on the big spin? No. End of story. No. And I don't think that you need it. So, anyways, I was having a fun time. I usually get very angry listening to you, but I was having a fun time listening to you make these women mix it up, get all riled over this, when in actuality, that's not the type of woman that you're after. Anymore. It's not hard to get women to fight with each other about anything. I mean, no. they, they women hate other women. <laughs> you all... I do enjoy men's company better. It's like it's, and you know what? It's like Michael Vick with a couple of dogs, stick them in the pen, and they go after each other. Right. It was very nice talking to you, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Sure was. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Melissa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. My dad got me listening to you a few years ago. And I completely agree with the, t t the statistic that was on there. I agree with you. The women that you had on there that disagree and get upset 
embarrassed me, <laughs> um, to say the least. I'm 26. I am a single mother. You know, that part of that is a statistic. But I am into politics. I know more or less what's going on. I don't have all the time that I would like. But on the other hand, I have a great rack. You there know, go. I'm hot. I wear tight jeans. Really? Yes, I do. <laughs> and there's no reason why anyone else that's my age can't get out there and vote. I registered as soon as I turned 18. I there was is, because age. most women your age are not interested. No, they're not. For whatever reason, uh, you know, whether they're too into themselves, what they don't realize is that, you know, the girl that you had on before said, I'm worried about gas, I'm worried about... 20 million unmarried women. And the ones that are married are retarded because they go with what their husbands tell them to do. So that's nope. even worse. That's I would right. rather have women not vote than do what their husbands say, because most of them don't know what they're talking about either. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> it, it happens in my family. It upsets me. The wife does what the husband says. And she has no clue. That upsets me more than if she were to not to vote at all. You see why I love doing this segment, dear? Yeah, and I, I think you should. I think it's great. I think that, you know, women my age need to care. They don't. But, you know, the fact that I'm a single mother, you know, I have I have my daughter. I pick her up when she's in the car with me. She's in my time. If I want to listen to talk radio, we listen to you all the time. Love it. You know, it's you. I don't cater to my kids. I'm, I'm a mom. I take her to school. I do all that stuff. But you know what? We'll watch the news. She's on my time. They listen to what you put in front of them. She's going to watch the news. She's going to watch CNN. She's going to watch whatever I put in front of her. I'm not going to cater her and have her watch the Wiggles or listen to whatever in my car on my time. That would drive me insane. I would rather educate her while she's young, and I can get the information I need at the same time. If more mothers did that than took themselves, put themselves first, maybe their kids might learn something. Melissa, thank you very much for that. This is Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. It's such a pleasure. Long time sure listener. Is. This is the first time I really felt there was some, some substance to this discussion. And I agree with you 100%. Yeah, I'm a 48-year-old woman, but let me tell you something. I, have, I was raised by, first of all, my grandmother was from Czechoslovakia. She was one of the original suffragettes. And I was raised in a European family with the European values. And the thing is, is that there's a big difference between women and girls. And when you're talking about women in general, you're talking about little girls too. And I think of little girls who are girls in their, you know, 18 years old who become a voting age, 19, 20, 21, where their world is basically what's going to look cute on me, what, what kind of makeup I'm going to buy, am I going to, you know, get the cute boy that I like. That's what's important to them. And you're a very intelligent man, and I respect you very, very much. But what we need to do is figure out a way how to reach these women. What can we do to reach these women to get them to vote? Because so I, many women... You know why? Because instead of a debate next time, they should have dancing with the candidates. Dancing with the candidates. There you yes. Go. And it's true. It's and if Barack true, Obama can dance candidate. better than Hillary Clinton, guess who's going to get the nomination? Right. Right. You're absolutely right. And I'm very passionate about this. I mean, I was raised liberal all the way from the time I was, can remember. And the issue to me is the environment, health care, things like that. And I think more women should be, um, you know, really thinking about this election because this administration, as you know, and as everybody else knows, what's been going on with this administration, I really need, need to discuss it because everybody knows. And here are women that have seen their sons, their daughters lose their limbs, things like that, and we have to make changes. But you're an intelligent man. I'm an intelligent woman. There's got to be something we could do to get to these women, to get them up off their you-know-what. The last time women came out and voted in force, it was that election where Reuben Studdard beat Clay Aiken. <laughs> that was the last time women voted in a big way. Really? Yes. Yeah, well, what then I there was the Taylor Hicks election. The Taylor Hicks collection? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Taylor Hicks. We have women voted for him. Oh, they voted for him, all right. Yes, yes they did. Yeah, and that's what, that's, it's sad. And you are right, because 
you know, these are statistics, and statistics don't lie. And But there's got to be a way that we could reach these women, and this has to be more important to them than getting a bigger house, you know, what kind of clothes they're going to buy at Nordstrom's, um, about all the, these things that, that, that blows my mind. I do have friends that I've had since childhood that I am no longer friends with. They all have children. My choice was not to have children, okay? I chose not to have children. But to me, this country, this world, the environment, everything, that's, that, that is what's the most important to me. And there's got to be a way that we can reach these women in somehow, some way, to get them up off their butts and get them to register and get them to vote. But I don't, think, I don't think there is because they just don't care. They don't care, do they? No. They really don't care. No. And, and, that, and that, to me, is it's so incredibly sad. That makes me so And the reason sad. Republicans generally win and Democrats generally lose is because the Democratic Party appeals to all the people who don't care about voting. You're Minorities, right. women, unemployed people, all the people who don't want to get up and go to the voting booth. That, that they have to go around and they have to rock the vote and they have to go around with uh, megaphones in, in poor neighborhoods. That's how Democrats try to get people out to vote. Uh, Republicans go after people who are interested in participating. Well, plus the Republicans have a heck of a lot more money than the Democrats, too. You got to not, this, not, not, this, not this election, they don't. You don't think so? No, that's a fact. That's not, that's not the last thing I heard. No, I, I, mean, I listen no. to Randy. I listen to Randy on Air America, you know, just as much as I listen to you. And from last I heard, the the Democrats um, still are not even close, not even close to no, the amount of money. I'll check that on that, but I don't. Get. I'll check on that, but I don't believe. Uh, generally, that's true, but I don't think in this election that's true. Yeah, well, I'm not sure because you know the Republicans because you know that they do the favors for for the uh, big businesses and the big companies and all companies and this and that, and this is what matters to them. So, you know, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Well, you know, Bill Clinton and his buddy at Tyson Foods, I mean, come on, it's it's all over the place. It it's is. Not, it's not any one party. That's why I don't belong to a political party. Yeah, you know, I, I was raised liberal, but I do vote with my heart. I vote with who I feel would be the best candidate and best person for the job. But really, basically, it comes down to I do not like politicians. I don't like them at all. I, I, you know, it's got to the point where, you know, what's happened to America? It, 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 it's a game. All they do when, when, when they have a debate, all they do is slam each other. They don't even talk about the issues. All they do is slam each other. Well, you do this, and you do that, and you do this, and you do that. You know, it's, why would people want to watch that? Because they don't even talk about the Actually, issues Actually, I think if they talked about the issues, even less people would watch. I think the, the number of people who watch... It is only because uh, they do slam each other. The more they slam each other, I think the more people will watch. Well, maybe you're right there too, because that's entertainment, right? Just like just like Dancing with the Stars or whatever that is. That's show, right. That singing show. I, th you, you know, if you ask each candidate if they're smarter than a fifth grader, I'll bet you get a lot more viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, and it's really, it's really sad, isn't it? I, you know what? Really I, I've been in this business so long. I, I don't. I don't weep about any of this stuff. I talk about what is, not what should be, could be, would be, ought to be. And that, well, and, and the reality is, young women do not care about politics. That's it. Ipso facto. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. 800 866 You have low self-esteem because you felt you needed to buy her a huge diamond ring in order to keep her. Exactly. Oh, no, yes, no, you could no. not have said it better. It's a big no. diamond penis. That's what it is. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show continues at one 800 800 tom with another edition of Chicks on Politics. Let's say hello here to Trish on the Tom Likas Show. Trish. Hi, Tom. Were you waiting for something? No, I had a question for you. Ah. The article that you read in, uh, was it ABC? Yes. Okay. Um, did it address at all the number of unmarried men over the age of 21 who don't vote? 
By the way, it didn't say over the age of 21. A caller misquoted the statistic. It's unmarried women, period. Right. But why didn't, why didn't this poll take that into consideration? The people who did the poll. Because ABC got What they name. say in the article is that this is the largest group of non-voters out of all the demographic groups. That okay, means that them. by definition, that means more unmarried women did not vote than unmarried men. I see. Because it seems to me that kids in that age range don't vote, period. It's not an age I range. Run into a lot of but it's not an age range. Unmarried women. women that means 21. women 18 years. No. I never said over 21. Just unmarried women, period. Unmarried women. 18, 87, 187. Okay. And that's that's the only that's the only group that they addressed. They didn't That's the largest many, group. Many, it's the largest unmarried. It doesn't matter. It's the largest group. How many unmarried men? It do, it doesn't Why? say and it doesn't matter. It's it is again. Why doesn't it matter? Because this is the largest group. So what if that's the largest? There's some group is going to be the largest. No, but this is the largest. Okay. More well, unmarried men vote than unmarried women. And that's and that's unfortunate. And I think it's it a fact. That you remind them that they're very close to losing their right to terminate a pregnancy. That's, well, it's not my job to remind them of what to vote for. Right. Uh, the the reason abortion is in danger is because the women who get abortions don't vote. Aren't voting exactly, and they That's never right. have. Mainly concerned with women of reproductive age. That should. Yeah, be that, those are the women. That's what I'm saying. Women who still buy tampons don't care about politics. Well, they should. But they don't. Well, I do, and I. Well, it doesn't. Uh, fine, but you are one person. There's there's okay, nineteen but, million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine others who don't vote. Out of how many women in this country? I don't have the number in front of me. It's irrelevant. The point is, it's twenty million unmarried women not voting. Fifteen million, three quarters of them. Didn't bother to register. By the way, it says here for the first time in the nation's history, the number of unmarried, separated, divorced, widow American women now equals the number of married women. That's 26% of the eligible voting population. So they are 26%. The unmarried women are 26%. That's 52% right there. Well, I hope you can convince them. To start I'm not here to convince anybody to do anything. You know what? If women don't vote, that means I don't have to pay for their child care. I don't have to pay for their food stamps. I don't have to pay for any of that stuff that women want, free stuff. You we, might if they can't have women are freeloaders. You know what? If women don't vote, they, they won't be voting for all that stuff that's going to raise my taxes. Well, it's perfectly fine, ladies. Don't vote. Uh, yeah, but if they can't have abortions anymore, you're going to be stuck paying for a lot more. Darling, if, if, if I knocked up a woman and she couldn't get an abortion in this country, we'd be taking an abortion weekend in Costa Rica. In a villa, we would get a legal abortion and enjoy the weekend and the sun and the surf while she uh, recovers there on the beach. So it's not going to be my problem. Well, I don't know that everybody can afford to do that. They can't. But if they don't care about voting, it's not my problem. Then it's not your problem. Right. It's not. The, the, the problem with the Democratic Party is that they waste all their time trying to get all the groups that don't want to vote to vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. The reason the Republican Party kicks their ass every time is because they only go after people who are interested in participating. Right. Young people. No. Not young people. Working people. People with jobs. People who own houses. People with wealth. Yeah, but the, the white people, republic, Republicans is generally older. Well, older people are more likely to vote, too. Yeah, and older people tend to vote. Especially for older women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. We'll see what happens. We know what happens. Young women don't care about this stuff. They don't care. 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number? It's Marie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 
Hey, Tom, I'm so excited. I love oh, you. Oh, so good. Yeah, I love that you care about women's issues and how much I don't care about women's issues, but I think that you're right, um, and all these women are wrong. Making women vote is a women's issue. These women who are calling in and they're so hyper about women who don't vote should go find women who don't vote and start activist groups and make women vote about something. Right. I mean, this doesn't have anything to do with Tom Likas. It doesn't have anything to do with Democrats. It doesn't have anything to do with any of these people. Women just aren't the interested. They're issue. not interested. Exactly. And that the only people who can make them interested are other women who do care about politics. But even those women bore the women who don't care. Well, what's extremely funny about that is, you know, in listening to your show, every time there's a commercial, I just switch it over to NPR. And what's happening on NPR right now is two women discussing politics. And I was like, <laughs> I know, isn't that awesome? <laughs> Anyone who wants to listen to politics and women, you know, NPR. One of them is old, <laughs> one of them is a lesbian, probably. Probably. I Which mean, is okay NPR with me, but that, that those are the people more likely to participate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the but fact. I think, I think people who have issues like sexuality and um, care about abortions do vote about that stuff. Not the women who have abortions, but women who are concerned with men making laws about their uteruses. Most of the women who vote about abortion couldn't get knocked up if they gave it away. <laughs> Why well, vote about abortion? I said <laughs> I'm most. I'm not going to get knocked up anytime soon. I said most, dear. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> and you know it's true. Oh, yeah. No, I went to college. I learned the statistics. I know my women's issues in and out, and that's why I don't pay attention to them much anymore is because I was so focused on them for so long. But, yeah, I mean, it's seriously boring. You know, and, and in fact, the, the, the ABC story said that women are more likely to vote when they're married. <laughs> well, I think that earlier caller was right. I know a lot of women, at least my parents' age, who do sit down with their husbands and they both figure out what they're going to vote on. Right, and they generally that, vote the same way. The women ask the men, who should I vote for? And the men tell them, which is why women vote Republican when they're married and Democratic when they're single. Yeah, well, and, you know, people vote Republican when they've got something to protect, like money, which, while women who are Republicans may not have money to protect, they certainly have... Well, they've got their protection. husband's money, yeah. and they've yeah, got their exactly. house, and they don't want their property taxes going up. Yeah, they have a like that. interest in the finances of their marriage. So. Women who want free birth control and free food stamps and free child care, they vote for Democrats. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, well, and you were saying, you know, Democrat, Democratic Party people, um, they don't want to vote. They just want to... They vote Democratic because they don't want to deal with it, and I think that's very true. I think Democratic people want the government to take care of everything for them. They don't want to participate. But, but the thing is, the Democrats actively solicit the votes of the people who don't care about politics. I know. They scrape the bottom. <laughs> I mean, I, the only way they're ever going to win is to start finding people who are interested. Stop, you, stop wasting your time on women and the minorities who don't vote. And stop wasting your time on slackers, the unemployed, the unemployable, the homeless. And start going after people who have an interest in what's going on. Agreed. But, but women are not part of that group. Young, unmarried women couldn't care less. <laughs> they should I not agree. spend 10 cents trying to get those people to care because they don't. I agree, and the women who do should try and make the women who don't care. I mean, if you care so much about women not voting, go start a group. No, no and women are not going to, women don't, no, no. Hey, if you want women to get interested in voting, they need to get married. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> they need a husband to get them interested in voting. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Honey, on the way to Ikea, we're going to vote. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, and okay. after that, we're going to look at futa. <laughs> well, thank and, you very and you, much. By the way, you know that's true as well as I do, don't you? Well, I know. <laughs> and you know, and you know, if the next debate was turned into Dancing with the Candidates, women would be fascinated. Well, sadly, I wouldn't be able to watch it because I'd rather watch the <laughs> the regular debates. But well, you know, I mean, really, you think Barack Obama would definitely beat John Edwards? No doubt. <laughs> oh well, 
So I've got a question. Do you think that more women will vote since there is a woman presidential candidate? No. I mean... No, I, I think, think, I, think so women, because, I think women hate other women. Yeah, women despise Hillary Clinton. I mean... Just, but if you ever want to see what women think of women, go to anybody's house who's watching Name the Newscast, Eyewitness News or whatever... <laughs> Depending on what city you're in, action news. Sit down and watch women watching the woman anchors. Look at those boobs. They're fake. Well, they dress poorly. And she wears they that cranky on. jewelry. Look at that. Or <laughs> sit with women when they're watching a beauty pageant of any kind. I don't know. I mean, she's fat. Really Look at her. She's fat. <laughs> you'd have a really hard time convincing any woman that women like other women. I mean, we all know. It's no secret. Well, that's my point. So uh, do I think women will automatically vote for Hillary Clinton? No. <laughs> no, she's awful. <laughs> I won't vote for her, but I just wondered if you thought so or no. if you'd read anything about it. Even, you know, the women who'd be most likely to vote for her don't vote. They're the women we're talking about. <laughs> well, then who cares? <laughs> Well, they're not going to vote. I don't care. I couldn't agree with you more, darling. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I'll think of you the next time I get a crack on my ass. <laughs> oh, do you like a little redness or do you like the full Monty there? Oh, honey, I'm African American. That's not enough to get me red. There we go. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Hollywood, it's the Tom Likens Show, another edition of Chicks on Politics, at 1-800-5800-TOM, oh yeah, the Chicks want to show how much they know, <laughs> and care, Vanessa, you're on the Tom Likens Show, hello, hello Tom, hello Vanessa, I can barely hear you, there we go, so, I am a chemistry major at UCLA. I'm the top of my class. Your, your looks in this type of a field of major do not matter. I'm not, not ugly. Good-looking girl, I have a boyfriend. This subject matter is great. Let me just say I've learned from you. I think that that statistic is impressive. And I think that the Repub what you said about the Republican Party and who they cater to, brilliant. I never looked at it that way, and it's a very, very good comment. Um, I think... If there was ever a solution, you have to make some sort of an incentive program. I know they gave you a sticker, and my government teacher in high school gave you five points for coming in saying, I voted when you turned 18. He also encouraged the men in, to go into Marines. He's a different type of teacher. Um, nonetheless, they should give you a free pair of matching panties and bra from Victoria's Secret in case you vote and you're a female. <laughs> pair of panties that says, I voted today. It's better than a free baby. Would you take me out with a bong rip and a thank you, Jesus? Here you go, Vanessa. Thank you, Jesus. Love it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Barbara on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Excellent. I'm a long-time listener, and I love your show. Thank you. I, have, I had a quick question for you just about uh, a comment you made a little earlier with, I think, two callers ago, where you had mentioned that, you know, women getting married, it's uh, kind of a husband's influence that gets them into voting. Is, yes. Is that, is that really the reason you think that, that women in, in marriage actually begin to vote as the male that's influence? What, that's what ABC News says. I'm, I'm curious because I would, I would almost imagine, and I'm just recently married, but and I'm not greatly into politics, and I don't want to give that impression. But I would think that women, you know, becoming married, care more about politics solely for familial issues, like you know, raising their children, the schools they go to, tax issues. Not necessarily as much just because they have a male in their life that actually. Well, cares I, it says it right here. The vast majority of married women have historically tended to vote Republican while unmarried women have leaned Democratic in the voting booth. Hmm. That's number one. Okay. And that's because women ask their husband, who are we voting for, honey? <laughs> and then, uh, of course, unmarried women, unmarried, separated, divorced, widowed, they are less likely to vote. Yep. 
I just found that comment really interesting, and I didn't hear all the statistics before. I kind of tuned in late, so I just wanted to, to get your idea on that topic. And if you, you actually, if you personally did believe it was the male influence or if you thought maybe it had to do more with familial issues. I No, and I, 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 and I also do believe the Democratic Party pursues every loser um, and everybody, every slacker, and people who are unmotivated and people who don't care and people who don't participate. That's, that's who they pursue. And I can agree with that. I mean, they go after every group that doesn't vote. Instead of going after the groups that do vote, they go after the groups that don't. And I think that's very true. Yeah, you know, why, why are you going after the unemployed and the homeless and the uneducated? <laughs> How about you go after people who do care? Right. Waste of time and money. Right. Just very interested to hear your, your point, and again, love the show, and thanks for having me on. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number here. Let us continue our conversation. Uh, look at all these people calling in. Sandia, is that your name? Sandia on the Tom Likas show. It's the Sadia. Sadia. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, my point is I agree on the what you're talking about here as far as women in politics, with the exception of it's not like minorities or anything like that. I'm a black African-American woman. I'm very well educated. I have a very good job. I'm single with no kids, and I do vote. Do you and think I you're the norm? No, but I don't think that it's because my family, all of us doctors, lawyers, very well educated. They have their the top of their field, whatever they do, and we're all educated, and we make sure that we vote. That's something that was preached in my family growing up is that you vote. You buy real estate, you vote, you establish yourself as a person before you get married, before a husband or wife comes into play. And that's all that, you know, I really have to say as far as that. It's not a thing of, you know, minority or anything like that. And to make sure, like the a caller said a few times ago, make sure that your kid growing up when they're around you, that you make sure that they watch the news, CNN. That's something that my family also did growing up so that we weren't complete idiots on what was going on as far as politics or anything else in society. And do you think that's normal? Well, maybe because everyone I know around me, me, my family, friends of our family, we were all raised that way. That's what I see. So it is kind of the norm to me as far right. as everyone else and what they do. I can't really say that. Let me ask a very controversial question here, okay, because mm -hmm. it's, it's just politically incorrect to ask what I'm going to ask it. How many black people are like you and watch CNN? Like I said, as far as... Everyone on a statistic basis, I don't know. Wait, what would you I guess? Know me as my family, not too many, um, because also, like I said, I went to schools. I went to schools in Palisades and Malibu area, but uh, then yeah. I did go to school in inner cities, and a lot of the kids out there were completely oblivious to what was going on. I went to college in North Carolina, and especially out there, they were completely oblivious to what was going on. If it wasn't happening right there in their little neighborhood, it was like the rest of the world didn't exist. So That's what yeah. I'm talking about. So I, I understand you're educated, and uh, uh, your family is educated, and you all take uh, public affairs and civics very, uh, very seriously, politics, very important to you. But... By the way, 24-year-old woman of any color, they generally don't care. Hey, I mean, and like I said, and I can't speak for every 24-year-old, and I don't think that they should have to buy you underwear because if you're not concerned for yourself, <laughs> then why should the government be concerned about you at all? You know, and I don't think that, you know, like you said, the Democratic Party, they only go after people who don't vote. That's, maybe that's maybe MTV does idea. like a, a reality show about, uh, you know, like Barack Obama or John Edwards. They go out and do like a reality show. They have them, you know, I going out reality. and smoking weed and living in a dorm with a bunch of kids and stuff. Maybe. Maybe that would appeal to the, a lot of the younger kids. But maybe you make it like Big Brother. You put them all in a house. All the candidates, they live there together for eight weeks. Maybe. This Maybe. is how you would get. You want to That's get young people maybe. involved? I'll show you how to do it, okay? This is what you do. You know, you have a big talent contest. You have Simon Cowell decide who the next president's going to be. <laughs> That's probably will, because apparently a lot more people vote for American Idol, so I've heard on TV in statistics-wise, than they do for a regular presidential. That's right, especially so. women. 
Well, I feel sorry for him because... Because really, how many, straight, like how many straight guys... How many straight guys watch American Idol? Come on. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess ABC would have to do a story on that one, too. And by the way, when you have gone to vote, when, when you look around, how many women under the age of 50 do you see at your polling place? I've never stopped to pay attention to the fact that I've always gone like with next my time you vote. 50. <laughs> next time you vote, pay attention. The women behind the counter taking your signature, she's 90. And then the people coming no. in to vote, they're 50 and above. And then there's you. No, I mean, like I said, I when I go, it's like me, my mom, me, my aunt. My mom had me. She was 20 years old when she had me, so she's very young. Yet she was married. She was working, and she was just graduating college when she had me. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Everyone in my family, they vote. That's not something I notice because everyone else around me has always done it. Oh, I understand that. But as I always say, your friends and your family, they are you. They're a representation of you. You tend to know people who are like yourself. Yeah, true. Right. But if you look around at people in general, maybe the people you don't socialize with, they could be very different from the people you personally know. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel bad because our society is just going down. It's like in hell in the handbasket. And, you know, I feel bad for everyone, our kids and the kids that I may have in the future because society is just going to be horrible. Maybe I'll just move to another country like France or something. They'll be a little better off there. Oh, yeah. They're having a good time in France where the, uh, the president of France, his wife just screwed around on him and they just split. They're having a good time politically over there. Oh, well, you know, your marital status has nothing to do with politics. Well, ask the people in France. No, well, well then our country is really screwed up because look at Clinton. That's what I'm talking about. Helen, hello. Helen? You busy over there, Helen? Yeah, there you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Kelly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, sexy. Hey, darling. How are you? Great. Great. I love you. Thank you so much. So here's the deal. Don't you... Do you vote? I do. But don't you believe that our government is corporate-owned? It's not corporate-owned. I think it's a division of a conglomerate, but I don't think it's owned. I mean, I've seen shows where... I've, I've watched documentaries where you can't find the ballots. All I, all I know is if it can be owned. I, I have a lot of stock in the stock market. I'd like to get my piece of the pie, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.